Hello again everybody, this is Pastor Tony and welcome to lesson number 11 in our fourth series in the Healing 101 course. And we're talking about in this series really focused on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said the gospel. There's only one gospel and that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work. It's the message of what God did for us in Christ that we could not do for ourselves, And I tell you, this, uh, this whole revelation of the gospel message should be exploding on the inside of you. It should be exploding in a revelation that is revolutionizing your entire life. I'm not just in the healing area, but every area of your life. Now I want to go back over to our springboard verses, our golden text for this particular series so far found in Romans chapter 1. Romans, the first chapter, a couple of verses here. These are powerful. The reason we're using these two verses is because it, these two verses really are loaded with revelation and understanding uh, about the gospel of Jesus. Now, here in Romans 1, 16 and 17, Paul is writing, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek or the Gentile. Verse number 17 says, For in it, the gospel message, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now I want you to see what the, the gospel of Jesus will produce in our life. First of all, it contains and releases when we mix our faith with it the power of God that was released in Jesus when he was raised from the dead. It is overwhelming, overcoming, more than enough power. It's that same power that God released in Christ on the third day when he raised him up from the dead. That is the same power that's resident in the gospel message. It's also the same power that's within every believer. But notice that the gospel also contains something very, very important that we've been talking about now for a couple of lessons or so. Here in verse 17, in it, in the gospel of Jesus, the righteousness of God is revealed to us from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, if we're not hearing the gospel of Jesus in its, more, in its purest form according to the writings of Paul here and others in the New Testament, then we're not going to receive a revelation of righteousness. If our version of the gospel message is a mixture, and that's really what's being perpetuated in most pulpits today, is being spread about and taught and preached, it's really a mixture of what, what God has done in Jesus along with what we do for God. But I can tell you the gospel in its incorruptible, purest form is all about Jesus. Has nothing to do with you. You're not in the picture at all. It all has to do with him and what he did in his finished work, in his death, burial, resurrection. Now I say it's not according to, it doesn't have anything to do with you. You do have to receive it, but we have the easy part. We have to believe it and receive it. It's the faith part. It's the receiving part. But God has already done it. God has already done all the work. He's already finished the work of our salvation, of our redemption in Christ. And now we just have to receive that according to faith. But uh, the incorruptible uh, gospel message that we're talking about here in the New Testament is going to give us a revelation of righteousness. So again, righteousness is not just righteous uh, good deeds. Of course, those are fruits of righteousness, but the root of righteousness is just simply being in right standing with God. It's being right with God. It's, it's having a right and an expectation of God's unmerited favor uh, in, in our life. And of course, the righteousness concept, this righteousness of God includes anything, everything of who we are and what we have in Christ, in our identification in Jesus. And I'll tell you, there's a lot to that right there. This is a broad concept, but it's all culminated in that one term, the righteousness of God. Now I want you to see here that it is the righteousness of God. 
Now, why did it have to say the righteousness of God? Why didn't it just say righteousness? Well, because there are basically two kinds of righteousness. One of them doesn't work. It's never going to measure up. It's the righteousness of men. What we call self-righteousness is never going to get us there. But then we have to distinguish the gospel of Jesus is giving us a revelation of the righteousness of God. And I tell you, that revelation right there will cause your faith to explode. It'll cause your faith to get bold and confident and you receiving from God and you approaching uh, God and receiving from Him and in your daily walk here in this life. And again, there's just so much to that right there, but we really want to focus on how that relates to our healing and how it relates to us receiving healing. You said, well, does this righteousness, does this revelation of righteousness have really anything to do with our healing? I can say, first of all, from the Word of God, we've already looked at this, 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, talking about Jesus, that we having died to sins with him might live unto righteousness, this right standing with God, being in favor with God being having his divine approval being accepted by god and then it says by his stripes we were healed so notice in the same breath same verse in the same context he's talking about us walking and living under righteousness in this righteous concept and revelation and us walking in then the reality of healing us receiving healing in our physical bodies now let's look over real quick we're there in romans 1 Let's go over to Romans 3 real quick. Same writer Paul talking about this. He's just progressively going through Romans and, and talking about this revelation of righteousness or justification by faith. And of course, that is the centerpiece of the whole gospel message. That's the centerpiece of the new covenant right there because without restored righteousness, when it's not a finished work. <laughs> Jesus didn't do a finished work. If Jesus did not completely restore righteousness, and by the way, he not only restored it, he added to it, made it better than what we had before, uh, sin in the fall of Adam in the, in the Garden of Eden. But if he didn't do that, it wouldn't be a finished work. And that wouldn't fly with God, I can tell you, because this whole salvation plan of God was out to restore righteousness unto all of us, unto mankind. And of course, uh, being right with God means that God had to do something with our sin. And we've already looked at this. We've seen scripture after scripture where uh, through the finished work of Jesus, through his blood that he shed for us and applied in heaven, he completely purged our sin. He completely abolished it and put it away like it never even happened. And that's part of that definition that we've been given for righteousness right standing with God is that Jesus in his finished work completely abolished and put away sin completely purged it out of our life and out of our accounts just as if sin never existed at all and I tell you that is this perfect complete righteousness that we're talking about and now right here in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 24 Notice it says here, being justified. Justified means being declared and made righteous by God. Being justified freely. Now, we've already pointed out that word right there, freely. What does freely mean? That means that you don't do anything to earn it or deserve it. It's a free gift from God. See, that's the only way you're going to be receiving righteousness from God, having righteousness restored to us. God knew that there is no way that man, mankind, any of us, even the best, most moral, good human being that ever walked on the planet could ever earn and achieve this perfect righteousness, this righteousness of God here. So the only way that we're going to have that, the only way we're going to be have this kind of righteousness, be right with God on this level right here, which is really the only thing with God, in the mind of God, is for Him to provide it through Jesus, through our substitute Jesus, by faith, through His abundant grace. See, that's what makes it free right there. And you say, well, bless God, I'm going to go out, and I'm, going, I'm just going to work hard, I'm going to earn it, and I've already done pretty good in my life. I already should have an entrance into heaven. You're going to be surprised <laughs> how, how impossible that really is. And that's the reason 
that God gave the law first, the Mosaic law, was to reveal the fact to us that we could never earn that kind of righteousness. You know, God doesn't grade on a curve. He didn't say, all right, you tried really hard. You kept most of it. You know, I'm going to grant you righteousness. That's not the way this works. In fact, the book of James, I think chapter 3, it says that if we miss it in one point, it's like we missed the whole thing. We're just guilty of all of it. In other words, you might keep it 99.9% .9 of the time, but the 1%, 0.1% is going to knock you out. You're not going to have perfect righteousness the way God wants us to have this right standing in favor with Him. And so, you know, you add that to other scriptures like what Jesus said, even if you haven't done it, if you've already, you know, seen it and intended to do it, intended to do it in your own heart, then it's like you're guilty of doing it to begin with. And then the Bible says, everything that's not of faith is sin. So by this time, you ought to be saying, all right, I'm going to throw myself on the mercy of God. That's exactly what the law is supposed to do, bring you to the end of yourself and point you to Jesus, point you to the grace of God, which is more than enough that God is going to give us this free gift of righteousness freely by grace, even though we didn't do anything to earn it or deserve it. And see, that's, what, that's why we say the gospel is news is almost too good to be true. Now notice again, it says being justified freely by his grace. Notice that by his grace through the redemption. We've already talked about that, the freedom through the payment of a price. What price was that? It was the price of Jesus giving his own life and becoming our substitute. So again, justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In that one verse right there really summarizes how we receive this righteousness. That's the only way you're going to be right with God. This is the only way that we can be be and have this kind of righteous, perfect righteousness that, that brings us into the presence of God, that, that causes the blessing of God and the favor of God and, and the healing power of God to manifest in our life is only through the avenue of His grace that has to be received through faith. See, everything that God did for us and provided by grace has to be received on our part by faith. We're going to go into that a little bit, uh, a lot more in detail in the next and last uh, le uh, series in this course right here, talking about the faith of God, faith to receive from God. So let's go, look over, we're still in Romans, to Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. What does this have to do with healing? Well, I can tell you through my own experience, this is what I was going to say earlier, through my own ministry experience and ministering healing for a long, long time to God's people. I, I can tell that, I can show people from the Word of God that by His stripes we were healed. Healing is included in the atonement or in the redemptive reality, and, and it is. We've already po pointed that out in detail. We, we can get people looking at that, but when it comes to receiving healing for themselves personally, individually, they, they come up short, and it's because of this issue right here. They don't have the revelation the understanding of this righteousness. And of course, that goes along with having a revelation of God's grace because that's the only avenue that it comes by is through the grace of God. It doesn't come through partial grace and partial works. No, it doesn't. I can tell you. But that's, that's what's being perpetuated in what we call this mixture gospel that's being preached. And that's why people are coming up short. And most of the people I've dealt with with healing trying to receive healing from God on this level, have been, have been Christians. They've been born-again believers, but they've been taught a different gospel. Well, there's only one real gospel, but there is a version of the gospel that really puts the spotlight not just on Jesus, but on us. Well, guess where the enemy's going to attack the, 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 the thing here? In the weak spot. He's going to attack it in the weak spot, which is not Jesus. It's not the finished work, not the work of the cross, death, burial, resurrection. It would be the focus on us. And he's going to convince you and disqualify you to yourself from ever receiving healing or anything else from God on that basis right there. That's why we have to look at the pure gospel message, which is 100% about Jesus, 100% about what God did for us and his finished work of, in Christ that we could never do and attain ourselves. Romans chapter 5, verse 2, notice, 
This is through whom, talking about Jesus, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now notice that right there. Through whom? Through Jesus. Also, we have access by faith into this grace. The book of Titus tells us that the grace of God has appeared to all men unto salvation. What does that mean? All men are saved. Does that mean all everybody's born again? No, it comes down to us receiving it. And the way we receive the free gift of what God has done in Christ, provided for us in Christ, is by faith. By faith, we access this grace right here. We access the grace of God and all that it, it contains, all the supply of heaven, it contains through our faith. Now notice that we are already standing in this grace. As He's talking to believers here. We're already standing in this grace but notice that we there's more grace on top of that that we can access by faith. See, it's not just enough grace to get you in the front door of salvation in the new birth, and that, that's as far as the grace of God's going to take you. And, you know, and then you have to kind of wait till you leave this place and go to heaven someday, and then maybe if you've done good enough in your life, then God will grant you access to the rest of it. Well, that wouldn't be grace then, would it? That wouldn't be grace at all if it had to do with you and your works. And no, that is not what the Bible is telling us. There is more grace on that, this side of, of salvation. That's why the just shall live by their faith, not just initially receive salvation by faith and then just kind of fold it up like Sunday clothes, put it in the drawer and forget about it till we get to heaven. No, nope. we, we, are, we are supposed to be living as just people, righteous people. We're supposed to be living by this faith. That means that there is enough grace not only to get you in the door of salvation through the new birth, but there's more than enough grace for our everyday life. And that includes healing in your physical body. There's more than enough grace, whether you feel like you've earned it or deserved it or not. Don't disqualify yourself because the grace of God and the finished work of God in Christ is what qualifies us to receive all the blessings of God, including healing in our, in our bodies. Now notice, it says we access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now, hope in the Bible, New Testament hope, is a confident expectation of God's goodness in our life. Well, is healing a good thing? Well, we've already established that. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Notice that the Holy Spirit, through Peter, said that healing, healing all, is a good thing. Well, see, this is what gives us our expectation, our hope, for our confident expectation for God's goodness, and we can say God's goodness in the area of physical healing in our bodies. What's going to give us that? It's because it's not by words. It's by accessing the abundant overflowing grace of God through our personal individual faith. And I'll tell you, that's easy. That's the easy part. God's done the hard part for us. All we have to do is believe this message, mix our faith with it, and receive what he's already given in Christ as a free gift. Now, let's skip on down here to uh, verse number 16. Really, this whole uh, chapter here of Romans is comparing the sin of man, particularly the sin of the first Adam. That's what got the ball rolling in the Garden of Eden. And all the fallout of the fall, including uh, sickness, disease, infirmities, poverty, lack, the curse in all its forms can all be wrapped up in the fall of man. But he's comparing what Satan was able to do and what happened to mankind because of sin and the fall of man from the first Adam with the salvation work of God that was carried out and finished through Jesus through the last Adam. He's called the last Adam. And I tell you, when you start looking at it in that comparison, he, he starts putting these side by side, and when he gets done with this, our focus shifts off of how great and how powerful sin is 
to how great and how powerful the grace of God is in our life. And that's what it's supposed to do. Now, before we look at these two verses right here, let me just point out, I'm not belittling sin. God didn't belittle sin. Jesus didn't belittle it. It wasn't just something that God just swept, swept under the rug one day. Absolutely not. You see a picture of our sin when Jesus is hanging on the cross. The Bible says you couldn't even recognize him in the form of a man because he was so physically marred and so physically distorted from all the the, uh, from taking upon himself all the sin and the condemnation for our sin for all mankind. And I tell you, that just, that just, it just crushed him. That, that is actually the word the Bible uses is the word crush. It crushed him. And we're seeing that picture on the cross. So no, we're not belittling sin, but what we are doing is magnifying and putting in its relative worth the sacrifice of Jesus, how great Jesus is, and because of his perfect sacrifice, because of who he is, because of his, his value, in fact, he's so valuable, he's invaluable. You can't put a price tag on him. He's the son of the living God, the agent of creation. And because of who he is and his perfect sacrifice, his worthiness and worth, then he unleashed an enormous, overwhelming, overcoming, abundant, overflowing supply of grace. And I tell you, that's what God wants us to focus on. Not on how bad sin was, because God did, He took care of the sin issue. He wants us to see how great Jesus is. He wants us to focus on Him, the price that was paid for our sin. He wants us to focus on the grace that was unleashed and released into us because of that sacrifice that was offered up. So keep that in mind as we look at this. The uh, Verse number 16, it says, And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift, notice the free gift, which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Now, the Amplified, and I usually bring out the Amplified in this, but we don't have time to go into all these versions of the Bible. But sometimes it's good to look at other versions uh, in the Word of God, uh, particularly when you're talking about that, because really, what does that mean right there? I mean, what, what, is, he, what is he trying to say to us in that one verse? Well, the, the, the Amplified tells us that when you start comparing, I'm just summarizing that verse in the Amplified, when you compare sin and the fall of man, the first Adam, and all of ours added to it, with the sacrifice, the worth, and the grace that came through the Lord Jesus Christ, then when you start comparing these, the grace and what Jesus did, what God did in Christ, becomes incomparable and disproportional to sin and the fall of man. That's what the Amplified tells us. In other words, the grace of God is so great in Christ, available for all of us, that it just dwarfs sin and the fall of man by comparison. It becomes disproportional. You, you, can't, even, you can't even compare those two. They're incomparable. Now, I like the uh, Passion Translation of verse 16 as well. It reads this way. And it says, And this free-flowing gift imparts to us much more than what was given to us through the one who sinned. For because of one transgression, we are all facing a death sentence with the verdict of guilty. That's, that's where we all were, hopeless under that situation. It says, but, see this is where everything changes. That, that, that word but in the, in the New Testament, when it's comparison, it becomes a powerful hinging point. It says, but this gracious gift leaves us free from our many failures. It freed up from that. This gracious gift leaves us free from our many failures and brings us into the perfect righteousness of God. That's why I like the passion in this one, because it puts that one word, perfect righteousness. Perfect. You can't, you can't improve on this. Perfect means absolute, 100% pure. He says, perfect righteousness of God, acquitted with the words, not guilty. 
See, that's what's hanging over your head now. Not guilty, not a death sentence, not an arrest warrant, not a, a debt of sin that you can't pay crushing you. Notice it's we are free and we have that words over us now issued by the high courts of heaven by the uh, satisfied the claims of justice against us those words says not guilty that means perfect righteousness that means you're right with God you're not guilty you're not under condemnation you are right with God you're under his divine favor you have you have been accepted in the beloved well that in mind look at verse 17 says, for if by the one man's offense, I'm going back to the New King James, if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more, see, I like those words. Those are comparison terms right there. Much more, much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Now notice, God intends for all of us to rule and reign as, as kings in life. Not for sickness, disease, the curse, sin, condemnation, all those things. Satan to rule over us and reign over us. We are to be reigning over them. But what turns the tables on that and causes us to be ruling and reigning, the Amplified says, as kings in life, rather than being ruled and reigned over, made a foot rug in this life, is when you receive these two things right here, the abundance of God's grace, not just receiving grace and grace alone it says the abundance that's where the emphasis is on Re receiving the abundance of god's grace and of the free gift of righteousness the free gift of righteousness notice this a free gift if you receive those two things in other words they become the reality of your life they become the foundation and the basis for your belief system and the way you live your life then notice you're going to be reigning as kings in life. You're going to be receiving the strength, the power, the resources of heaven. Heaven is open for us through this finished work because of righteousness, but you have to receive these two things. In that order, by the way, because you can't really receive the concept, the, the, the revelation, and the gift of righteousness without receiving, first of all, the abundance of God's grace. It is all from God to man and not from man to God. We're going to pick up in this in the next lesson. We're going to go through some of the stories in the book of Acts, and I'll show you how this is applied, the application of this, and it is powerful. So don't miss the next lesson as we just pick up right from here and take off then. If you like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. We hope that it really blessed you. Hope you got a lot out of it. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you also turn on the notifications so that you get notified whenever we post a new video. Also, go ahead and hit that like button. And if God's doing awesome things in your life like we're believing Him for, then we would love for you to share that with us. So leave us a comment. Let us know all the good things God's doing in your life. We'll see you next time.